Howdy ho Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast episode 317 with the most gorgeous men on earth right here. This is the official Detroit Lions podcast for Reddit. I am Chris, your dashing host, and with me is Case, my unobtrusive odd couple co-host, Jeff, the Riz, Rizden, the man who knows more than anyone ever knew before, and Tony, T.O. Ortiz, the man who carries us all every day on his shoulders. Gentlemen, how are you today? We are we are good to be here. Three one seven. That's uh, that's Indianapolis area code, baby. Well, let, let, let's go to the Super Bowl in India. It's 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 really nice of the Lions because the this time of year is always very stressful. You know, I got a lot going on. It's very nice of them to take the stress of having to worry about <laughs> the rest of the season off of our shoulders for us. And... Yeah, here we go. All right, we got a big show today, uh, as usual. We're going to talk about coaching, COVID, Coombs, chatter, all kinds of stuff about coaches and Lions. Lions Buck preview, uh, Pro Bowl nods for three Lions. We'll talk about who, how much, how, why, all that stuff. We have game predictions and a whole lot more. We got a great show lined up. Case, you ready to go, man? With bells on. Let's kick this off and break it down. All right. How else would you be this time of year? All right, a couple of quick announcements. Mm -hmm. First, check us out. Help us out on Patreon. Very special thanks to Dylan from... Guam! All right. <laughs> of course, our very first donor, Mathis. And Brian Brookheiser from I Prevail. I Prevail Band.com. They've got that live album that they dropped about a month and a half ago. It's good stuff. If you haven't listened to it, go do so immediately and buy, buy one for you, one for Tony, and one for the rest of your friends. There you go. We talk about all these people because they hang out with us in the most intelligent Lions Slack chat in the world, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. If you go there, you'll get access to that. You just got to donate as little as a dollar a month. Um, look, the content's so good. Other shows are emulating the content almost uncannily perfectly to what we have going on in the chat. You got to check out. It is great, great stuff. Go to patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. And uh, donate as little as a dollar a month, help the show out, and uh, get some of the great content you'll see on this show and evidently others before that's even there. Check us out on Twitter at DET Lions Podcast. DET Lions Podcast, the very, the very best place to see Case. In all his Festivus. There you go. Oh, we've got the Festivus <laughs> poll. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com <laughs> slash Detroit Lions Podcast. Get in there. Get all the action going on on the YouTube channel. And rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora, Amazon, all those places, wherever you find us. Whenever you find us, give us those five stars because we love your reviews. Tighten your chin straps, kids. It's time to review this weekend Reddit. It's time to talk about the fun and exciting things going down this week in Reddit. And uh, I think the most important thing to start off with is, <laughs> stop laughing about that, Riz, the coaching stuff, the coaching stuff. Um, there's a lot going on, and we've got some COVID coaches to the point where all of the defensive staff is considered close contacts, and Coach Bevel is included in there. Tony, can you clear, clarify this? Nobody's really sick. They're just doing this as a ruse to ensure the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. are unprepared for this game. Sure. Okay. We'll go with that. Sure. Why not? <laughs> According to NFL rules, if you are considered a close contact, you have to be quarantined for five days. The timeline would suggest that Bevel and the defensive coaching staff won't be cleared from the protocols until Saturday night, Sunday morning at the earliest or at the latest. So my guess is, and Riz Case back me up on this, my guess is, the game's going to get pushed back at least a day. I don't think they're going to play on Saturday. I think they'll probably end up playing on Sunday. The NFL also has the option of pushing it back Monday. And they can do this because, A, the game was set for Saturday, but, B, it doesn't inconvenience either the Lions or the Buccaneers if they push the game back a day or two. And while the Lions aren't in the playoff hunt, the Buccaneers right. definitely are. And so they don't want to give a competitive advantage if they can avoid it, I think, you know, to to the Buccaneers by forcing us to play Saturday without an entire coaching staff, if it's avoidable. Right. And and moving into Sunday, it also Monday is a bit of a stretch because all the games of the following week are on the same day. So no right. team has an advantage in the playoffs. So I think that, that them going into that with a short week with playoffs on the line will probably be inconvenient. So I expect this game to be played on Sunday and not Saturday or Monday. But uh, again, like, like Tony said, the, the timing with the protocols makes it physically impossible for them to have a defensive coaching staff on Saturday at game time. 
because it didn't come out until Tuesday morning. You've got to have five straight days of, uh, of, of no positive tests. They've got one. Um, if you do the math, the fifth day would be Saturday, but it's after the game was already started. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem. I knew and it was I, trouble. I, I don't, th- I don't think they want, I don't think they want to have, um, me or case or Tony or you, Chris coaching <laughs> this game. Um, certainly not on the defensive side of the ball. Not, not that they're well coached on defense anyways, but it's, uh, just, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm just to let you guys know, I am coming into town. I can't say much more, but I am coming into town on the 26th. So there you go. Um, could it be that Hank Fraley is going to have a headset? <laughs> it won't be Braden Coombs. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> we can talk about that too. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, this has been the craziest last couple of weeks, going back to the firing of Patricia and Quinn. Just the last couple of weeks, anything that could possibly get crazier for the Lions has done so. And it's just been, I don't want to say it's been fun to watch, but it's been amazing to watch all of this unfold for one team. It's interesting to see them scramble around the way they are with with a a patched together front office that nobody really knows who's in charge. I mean, um, as I said the other day, when, when Chris and I were talking about the Coombs thing, Rod Wood has his nose over the pies, but he doesn't have his fingers in them. And who is making those pies is is quite tough to see at this moment. And apparently it's not Chris Spielman, but it might be, but it might not be. It's uh, oh, I can. It, it's a very, very strange <laughs> time in Lions land. <laughs> I can I can probably provide some insight, uh, speculative insight on that. I think it is a trio of well, it's a duo of Bevel and or sorry, uh, Spielman and and Wood, but Bevel has his input to so he's kind of the third, but the lower rung on that ladder. It's just you're not going to be told a whole lot. Look, when you're firing a popular coach within two days of hiring somebody like Chris Spielman, you're not going to put it on him. You're going to hang it on somebody who exactly. is probably not going to be the head coach next year, for example, right? Hang it on them. Give them a little nice payment on the way out as a thank you, a little extra extra to, to, to take the thing, give them the freedom to run the team and build up their resume and then move on and everybody goes their own way, happy, healthy, and, and on their way. I guarantee Chris Spielman's in those conversations. He's just not having this albatross wrapped around his neck of of i mean when you've got players already tweeting support of the guy who was fired can you imagine tony what kind of division there would have been in the locker room if the, these guys had to kind of like pick a coach if coombs was still around yeah that would have been wild and it's something else another layer of distraction that the lions don't need and look if Braden coombs went all colonel jessup from a few good men and called the code red with the fake pun <laughs> he deserved to be gone he really does. You cannot break the chain of command like that. But that being said, the timing on this is really interesting because it came out that this wasn't the first time that he's done this, or at least the first time that he's gone against the wishes of the team. So my question on this is, why not let him go when you let go of Matt Patricia and you let go of Bob Quinn? It would have been something people would have said, yep, we understand. It, it's fine. We understand that it didn't work out with Braden Coombs. But again, the timing on this just made everything crazy and it kept it as a story longer than it needed to be yep and case why is it that you think that you want to hire Braden coombs at your workplace tomorrow <laughs> uh i he's good at uh trying to screw things up i'm not really sure uh, <laughs> I, I i did i don't know where that's coming from but uh no i mean he was he was a good special teams coach obviously our special yeah. teams was amazing this year so it's frustrating it's super frustrating uh for the guy who who seems to have finally fixed our coverage to have blown any maybe potential future on a move like that um, cause there's no chance in hell that they, that anybody in Detroit would want to bring him back now, you know, the, the upper level guys. And that sucks. Cause I don't know. It is so tough to decide from an outside perspective on whether you want to support a guy who did a really good job, but did something incredibly dumb or not. I mean, that's really tough especially at a coach position. Players can get away with doing dumb things all the time and still manage to, you know, land on their feet. But that's not the situation he's in. No, no, it, it's it's absolutely not. And the other side of it is, is, look, whether you want him to stay or not, what he did was not only bad for the team in the moment, 
But and, and, and people are like, well, he's just trying to work on his resume to look better for his next job. Well, so's Bevel. And Bevel's the one that's in charge. And when you yep. break the chain of command, just like Tony said, and you do something that the coach asked you not to, you know, number one, it's going to get out and people are going to hear about it. And that's going to be a black mark on your resume because you can't control your coaches or won't control them if, if you don't fire him. And number two, he put him in a position where he had to do that. I would I would be angry as a leader if somebody put me in that position that I had to do something like that, especially under the circumstances that, that they're in right now. This is a little bit reminiscent of Bobby Ross, the I call it the Bobby Ross breakdown, <laughs> when he left the team, right? Because it was like a snap, snap, snap series of changes with the team that were just, it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is just unhealthy all over throughout the organization. And it, it took a couple years to snap that and get this, get some trust back in the organization. The organization. I mean, he had to go into 0-16 before he started building that. This These Patricia and Quinn years really, really, man, it's just been a, it just this this has been like a tumbling mess at the end of their this year. legacy is getting worse by the day yeah. it really is it's, um and, and remember it was patricia who specifically sought out braden coombs um that that has to be context into that conversation as well it was his guy he he, he specifically targeted him um he apparently has a relationship with his father who coaches at ohio state i don't know where the connection is but uh that that was the in there um that made it that made them lure a very good, successful young coach from Cincinnati. He was willing to jump from Cincinnati um, where he probably had a path to, to climbing the coaching ladder faster, quite honestly, uh, and came to Detroit to be with Patricia. When Patricia was gone, I think uh, my speculation is that that's probably where he's like, okay, I'm going to see what I can do and get away with. And uh, Bevel clapped back. It's one of the few coaching decisions that I actually think that Daryl Bevel has handled well as the interim head coach. And I give him some credit for that. Yeah. See, Hang on real quick, but my, I want to go back to the him, the concept of him building his resume. Yeah. Doing something strictly against what the team told you to do is not a good resume. Builder. No, no. And I'm sure that Coombs will, somebody will bring him on, but it's, he had potential, you know, to take a big step forward wherever he was going to go after this, even, you know, assuming he wasn't staying in Detroit. This is not a good look. Yeah, no, I agree 100. percent This is, uh, yeah, you know, he, he'll have to live with the decision. I mean, the, that's the one thing about you know we talk about. Hey, I would love to get a young head coach in here, uh, someone who can relate to these guys. There's wisdom that comes with experience, and and I've as I've gotten older, I've learned. <laughs> I used to think, you know, I was the young gun, and I knew how to do a lot of things better. I didn't go as far as Braden did <laughs> to, to literally go against what my boss said to do. But I did find ways to help evolve things and, and, and improve them and make them better. But you, you, that's part of being young is growing and learning because you may know the specifics of your job really, really well, but the con your job has a context. You are, you know, no matter what it is, basically you're a cog and a bunch of different cogs and a bigger wheel. And, um, you, you just don't have the head coach. That's why you work so hard to become a head coach, so you can make those decisions, period. So there you go. All One right, last um, thing on Coombs. Sure. It sounds like from the buzz that I'm hearing from, from various places that he is looking to get into the college coaching ranks, um, and that might be a better fit for him. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Tony, I want to ask you, what have we heard this week? Um, I know you've been man in the sports desk. You have all the latest and greatest news. You've got your news runner there behind you. Who something breaks in with it? <laughs> Go Jordan. So, hey Jordan. Jordan. Doing, um, talk talk to us a little bit about the GM search. How, how give us some updates on where things are going this week? Well, last time we talked, Louis Riddick had interviewed. Right now, Thomas Dimitrov and Rick Smith have interviewed. There was at least one report that said that Dimitrov was the front runner for the Lions' job. Although at this point, I can't see them settling on anybody this early. I still think they're going to go through more interviews. They're going to do more looking around, and I think this is a process that's going to take about five or six weeks total before they finally settle on a GM. But at this point, it looks like the guys you would expect to interview have already interviewed. Scott Pioli, Dimitrov, Rick Smith, Louis Riddick. Those guys are interviewing. More interviews are ahead. But at this point, I wouldn't expect them to have anybody in mind, anybody who's a front runner, anybody who's going to get the job at this point. Sure. And Riz, why is Pioli your front runner? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't like me, <laughs> and it's mutual. Um, uh, so when he was the GM of the Kansas City Chiefs, he and I got into a bit of a war 
uh, because I reported something that was true and he said that it wasn't and it was true and he didn't handle that very well. This is going back to 2010, I want to say. Uh, but so I, I saw him, I encountered him in mobile two or three years ago. Um, and he gave me a massive stink eye and flipped me off and I'm like, okay, Ooh, guess, guess he remembers who I am. Ooh, <laughs> so, uh, there may be a credential uh, open in lion's headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's, um, he's not the right temperament to follow Matt Patricia. If you catch where I'm going with that. <laughs> I think I do. Like yeah, that, I do. Now, what yeah. does this what does this do for our head coaching? If if this takes five weeks, um, tone, it, we're kind of behind the barrel then on finding our head coach, aren't we? Isn't that put us a little bit late in getting our guy? No, it puts you right on time, but it puts you in competition with all the other teams right. that are looking for head coaches right now, or will be looking for head coaches. For example, you're not competing, I think, with the Bears anymore. I think Matt Nagy has cooled off his hot seat considerably by putting them back in the playoff race. However, you are now in competition with the Minnesota Vikings because I have a gut feeling that Mike Zimmer is not going to be around as Vikings head coach beyond the season. Also, I would look at Denver. That's a team that's probably in competition with you because I think Vic Fangio is on the hot seat right now and probably not going to survive beyond the season because the Broncos are a mess. So there's a lot of teams that you're competing with right now that might have better situations. The Philadelphia Eagles are another team that if they dump their head coach, that might be a better situation right now than the Lions, at least if you want to turn a team around quickly and win right away. If you're a first-year head coach, if you're an Eric the Enemy type, you might want to go there with veterans, quick turnaround, boom, you're winning in the first season, plus that division has got awful. Yeah, absolutely. So what is that? How many teams now are we at? Do you guys, do you know, Case, or anyone know how many teams are now looking for head coaches if we add – Head coaches Minnesota to that list. Mm. Head coaches, it's it's Atlanta and Houston and us right now. Right. It's uh, gonna be Jacksonville, Jacksonville expects to be there. The Jets expect to be there. The Bengals are maybe gonna be there. The Cowboys are an outside shot at being there. I agree with Tony. I think Mike Zimmer, um, I think that's a situation where it might be a mutual parting more than, yep. than it's it's a firing. Uh did I say the Jaguars with, with the yes. Maroon? Because it, yep. it God, they're terrible. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that the right time to dump a coach is when you're getting the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Philadelphia is weird because they have the Carson Wentz situation, and that that right. precludes all other conversations that you can have about Philadelphia. Right. Um, I think the Giants are pretty happy with Joe Judge lately. Um, and by the way, their defensive coordinator is a guy, if he didn't yes. have the heavy Patriot ties, Patrick Graham would be a phenomenal head coaching candidate for Detroit. But that ain't going to happen because he's <laughs> – He's taken over where Brian Flores and, and Matt Patricia were, and that just ain't going to fly. So you have more teams than the Lions win record looking for oh, coaches. Oh, yeah, Anthony, Anthony Lynn in, in uh, Los Angeles, yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. You're yeah. talking 8 to 10. 8 to 10 teams yeah. looking for coaches. Almost a third of the league looking for coaches, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're We didn't even conflict. talk about the weird outlier one of the Buccaneers that could potentially. That, that's down. right. What if what if Detroit beats them this week with the weird coaching staff that we have? How does how does that reflect upon Bruce Arians, who's not exactly pop? Chris, you can attest to this. He's not exactly popular in Tampa right now. No, he's not. And and it's he's got a team full of I mean a team full of superstars, at least big names, right? And the, the expectation is performance, and it's just so it's like a drunken sailor trying to walk down the street. How they're staggered from side, win to loss, win to loss. It's like you don't know what you're going to get out of this team from week to week. And Bruce Arians is just not the He's not a Tampa personality either. I'll tell you, <laughs> just straight up, he just doesn't kind of fit the. the, yeah, the he's much the more of a Pittsburgh guy. Yeah, 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 for sure. I would think the Tom Brady situation there. If Brady wants him back, he comes back as head coach. I don't think anybody's going to say, you know what, Tom? But no, it's it's all up to, in my opinion, it's all up to Tom Brady. If he wants him back, Bruce Arians will be back next year. And and you know that you make a great point because if you think about it, if Arians is gone and Tom Brady's gone, Antonio Brown's probably gone. Gronk is probably gone. Gronk, is, Gronk will go. go. You yeah. get a massive rebuild on your hands, right? While they built with a bunch of like stars, they're older stars, and they're all going to go at the yeah. same this, time. This is likely. a team that's all in to win now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's an ugly turn. Woo. And I mean, that's that's why I brought it up in the first place was because yeah, the Tom, Brady and Arians yeah. were not getting along very well. I don't know. I haven't heard anything in the last few weeks, but I know that you know mid season even they were things did not seem. Uh, to be going well between the two of them. So if Brady doesn't want Bruce Arians around, 
<laughs> See ya. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. There you go. So we, we, we've got the update. Thank you, Tony and Jeff and Case for all that on the GM search. Um, let's go on to um, TJ Hawkinson news. This blew me away when I heard this. Revealed that he broke his leg and tore ligaments in his ankle last year. Broke his leg, I'll say that again, in the Thanksgiving game against the Bears. And it was reported as a sprain. Riz, is this a fine waiting to happen? I mean, this is... See, I don't, I don't remember it being reported as just a sprain because it was pretty clear if you watched the video, his ankle snapped. Yeah. You could see it. It was sideways. Yeah. So I don't know... I don't really know what the, it. if it's a semantics thing or whatever, but I mean, I, I do remember writing it that it was broken. And I know that Dave Burkett has written it that it was yep. broken. So I don't know if this is a team issue or if it's just, uh, it, it's very weird to me that it wasn't acknowledged that it was broken in the past. Somewhere uh, there's fake news. Because, is that because a lot of us were like, I mean, anybody who watched it, like, oh, oh, dude, he just broke his ankle. Oh, yeah. Can we oh, not get replay it was that, please? It was grisly. It was nasty. <laughs> yeah. Oof, well, it, seeing him come back the way he has this year sure makes me feel better about last year's broken ankle that was sprained. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, Case, how's your ankle? You still bouncing around okay? I'm all good. Okay. Just, just okay. Just okay. Um, Lions Pro Bowlers this year, we've got three. Now, this is weird because last year, did we did we have any last year? We wound up at the end when people opted out getting, I think Slay got in, right? After right. the fact. But it, he was like the 15th Mule alternate. Mulebach got in, I want to say. I don't know that. We're going to start talking about first ballot Pro Bowlers. <laughs> Let me look it up here. I got it in front of me. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at Galladay it. made it last year. Yeah. yeah. Mm, there you go. And Slay. Yep. And uh, that's it. There you go. <laughs> um, so this year we got Jack Fox. The, the boot can bang it a hoot. TJ Hawkinson obviously had a great, great year. And Frank, the throat rag now. <laughs> <laughs> You think he's gonna have that stud? Is he? He's gonna have that that big podcaster voice, isn't he, Tony? Yeah, he is. He's gonna be raspy. <laughs> he's gonna sound like this the whole time. It's gonna sound like Gunther Cunningham. That's what he's gonna sound <laughs> like. I loved Gunther. He was great. <laughs> oh man! All right, yeah. So those that's good. That's it's great to see a nod. The Pro Bowl is case. Why don't you? T I like it when you talk about how important the Pro Bowl nods are. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody I, there was a comment on something I saw that was interesting. It is important in the sense that it's important to the players because there's a lot of uh, incentives involved. Um, in contracts and things like that of that of that nature, uh, we did find out that Ragnow was not even in the top ten centers uh, voted by fans. So the league oh, wow. voting got him in, which is cool. Um, not that I necessarily think the players and coaches always are, are you know, uh, unbiased audience to begin with. Anyway, um, I've always thought the Pro Bowl was maybe the worst metric by which to judge whether a player was actually good as opposed to their reputation was good. But that's neither here nor there when it, when it comes to what the players, you know, want to get out of it and the, all the players want to get in because it's big for their rep. So, yeah. And TJ Hawkinson led from start to finish in his, yeah, in his he's voting, the, right? he's, he's just about top five in every tight end stat um, there is this year. And for a second year player, that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, especially with, with Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey in the AFC did I, he played better than any other tight end in the NFC this year. I was having I mean, a hard time overall. doing the math. It was up until this last game um, where our tight end was only 10 yards less in the season than our number one wide receiver, Riz. Right. I couldn't tell if it was He was actually over with the him offense. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a problem it's, with the uh, offense, or is it just he's that he's doing that well? It's probably a combination of both, though, right? I think it's both. I, I think that Hawkinson has proven to be the best weapon over the middle of the field, and that seems to be yeah. where Stafford has been more comfortable in throwing the ball this year. So that best can also be uh, give, give Hawkinson a lot of credit. He has he hasn't assuaged all the fans who were upset that he got picked when he did, mm -hmm. but nobody's upset that he's on the Lions anymore. Yeah, right. Like, okay, this this guy can play. <laughs> one of the sites that tracks drops 
has him tied with Eric Ebron for drops, but I don't think you could possibly, well, that that's why right. it's a subjective stat. I don't think it you is. could possibly look at the drops that TJ Hawkinson has had and compare them to the drops that Eric Ebron has had and say they're the same thing because Hawkinson is laying himself out for everything that comes his direction. And if they bounce off his hands, it's because it was an incredibly difficult catch to make in the first place. So if that's a drop, that's the same drop as the, you know, the, the getting hit right in the middle of the chest and it, the ball just bouncing free, you know, if, yeah. if, if Ebron, if, by the way, re- 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 took that lead. Number. Ebron retook the lead uh, on Monday night in Pittsburgh's loss because yeah. he dropped another one. And he also went down like a Euro soccer player. And, yeah, and, and I know, I, d- I don't really like dwelling too much on it, but I just like, no, I, I know that there are going to be <laughs> Lions fans who point out the number of drops that TJ had this year and be like, well, that's so much better than what we had. You know how you count it that? is. <laughs> Let them know that Calvin Johnson had the most drops in the last decade until 2018, three years after he retired before yeah. another receiver caught him in that decade in drops. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's the cost of doing business with the players. That's you knew that Calvin was going to drop 12 yep. to 15 passes a year. He got yep. thrown a lot of them as well. Yeah. That's uh, that, that's sort of the deal with Hawkinson. He has a much higher catch rate and a lower drop rate than Ebron because he gets fed the ball more. Um, uh, yep. That's, yeah. that's, that's where you need to look at it with that. Yes. He, does he have drops? Yes, he does. Would it be better if he didn't? Yes, it would be, but uh, it's, it's not necessarily something that needs to get him chained to the bench or, you know, below Jesse James or anything like that. So, also, so one- yeah, no, I, sorry, real quick before no. I go, before we go on, um, you all know that I, my feelings on PFF are, are split sometimes, but all you all you really need to do is look at their current grades for the year between the two of them and see how massive a divide it is. Well, so <laughs> Tony, let me, let me just really quick. You know, yeah. you, you love to really crap talk about Ebron. Why don't you share some of that with the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I want to see TJ Hawkinson improve on in year three is his run blocking. I mean, he's pretty much become yes. a, an offensive weapon, but now I'd like to see him turn that into some run blocking for whoever the next head coach is going to be. And I think that would really elevate him even further in the pantheon of tight ends because right now, top five, easy, tight ends in the NFL. I would, case, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd agree with that. For real. Quit diving at people's legs. Right. Yeah. TJ. <laughs> yeah. Aim higher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Let's move into the, the game preview. Um, usually our, our, our later in the week kind of thing. The Lions are now pushing it out a little bit thanks to their uh, COVID situation and the fact that they are going to be likely playing on Sunday, which means I don't have to try to watch it on the plane, though. But that's going to be... And coach, I mean, from the plane. So that's going to be pretty good. A um, little bit of a meta about the the meetups with the Lions and the Bucks. First, they've met 59 times. Uh, for you younger fans that um, aren't aware, they at one point were in the NFC Central, and we used to play them twice a year. And uh, that'll be in my Bucks memory section. I'll, I'll, I'll reflect on that. But they spent the first year of their, their uh, existence in the AFC West in 1976, and then came to the NFC Central where the Seattle Seahawks took their position in the AFC Worst. Uh, And then in the divisional realignment in 2002, they were moved to the NFC South. Uh, Let's see, we have scored a total of 1,250 points against the Bucs. They've got 1056 against us. We're 31 and 28 in the series. Uh, Lions lead that. 28th loss, the extra loss between uh, Riz and I talking about this is, is we have one playoff loss to the Buccaneers in 97, was it? Yeah, 1997. And I, I, as I said, I don't remember the game. Um, and I looked it up and Frank Reich was our quarterback. And I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so really quick, I'm going to go to the Bucks memories. This is mine. And, and Tony, I know you'll probably remember this. Riz, you'll probably will too. When they were in our division, they were the laughing stock of the of the NFL still, right? They were just an absolute joke. And the Lions were always threatening, right? We 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 looked like a good team. I mean, in 1991 we played them, but we lost to them in the 1991 year, and I think they only had like two or three wins that whole year. It seemed like every year, no matter how bad the Bucks were or how good the Lions were, we'd also always split the series with them, and it just drove me nuts. This was such a Lions thing to do, to split with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at that time. Do you remember that, Tony? I mean, it, it, it just sticks with me like like a bad smell. <laughs> I, You know what? They were the anti, they were the anti-Vikings. Remember we talked a few weeks ago about how the Vikings would always come in and kick the Lions' butt? Yep, yep. 
the Buccaneers were different. They would always play the Lions close, and it always seemed like they would just lose just a little bit. It was fun game. Oh, they would just lose. One thing, guys, worst uniforms in the NFL for a long time oh, were the yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, Those I disagree, orange. Tony. Those were great. Right? I love no. the creamsicles. I'm, no. I'm down with the creamsicle myself, but I know that it's a hotly contested issue. Tony, you have taste. I'm just going to let you know. Thank you. <laughs> they blind. The Buccaneers were successful because they blinded opponents with that awful orange. That's why they were successful. <laughs> now, honestly, I've taken it. I think they currently have some of the worst uniforms in the league. But that's... I, I agree with that too. I don't. I don't like yeah. that. Uh, they call it pewter, but it's not pewter. really pewter. It's more it's like pewter. copper mixed with tin or something. I don't. I don't know. Asbestos. Anyway. Asbestos. <laughs> I, I I mentioned to Britta uh, something about. Uh, I'm trying to remember who what team I was talking about being consistently ranked near the bottom and in their how good their uniform looks and she, she goes there's uniform rankings <laughs> said, well no not oh, yeah. like officially but <laughs> oh, people yeah. do it if you rank high enough it's worth a whole other win <laughs> <laughs> hey the the jets their their uniforms when they have the jet the sleek jet helmet that that's like the the dark green with the black trim yeah i love those, those uniforms football doesn't make them a good football team but those are those are sharp unis no no that's they are they're, they're great i really love those those uniforms a lot all right, um, we're going to move into the Diamond CBD Injury Report, brought to you by our friends at Diamond CBD. If you're looking for any kind of relief from insomnia, pain, or anxiety, what's your what's your cure? It's CBD. Uh, I just used the cream yesterday. I had to move it. We got a new table. It's like 175,000 pounds. I had to move the old one in, and then the new one at 170. It's probably like 174,000. I'm be exaggerating, but I, I had to bring that in. That that that. I was sore. <laughs> just went that, that way. I was sore, and uh, I put the cream on the uh, the shoulders and the back to to help things out. The and within, yeah, well, no, not all the way back. Uh, <laughs> within half an hour, I was I was feeling good again, and I was back to my happy go lucky self. Except for the hemorrhoid thing that Case talked about. Um, <laughs> let me know how that works, though. I don't know if you're doing them in suppositories <laughs> or what. I wouldn't recommend the gummies. Just get the cream. I, I would <laughs> avoid the suppository form <laughs> yeah. in any in any medication. <laughs> That's just not a pleasant way to go. We are a classy podcast. Yes, right. we, we are. Do, we do nothing but. Anyway, head over to cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com. It's good stuff. If you're looking just for the, the relief uh, from insomnia, pain, or anxiety, you can go through any of their CBD stuff. If you're looking for a little something extra that people tend to associate with the kind of heart of this plant, get the Delta 8 line, the chill line. You will definitely feel it. There's warning labels. Don't operate any free machinery and all that stuff on it. And they have a sale right now. Everything Delta 8, 65% off. Use the code d 8 oil d8 oil and uh go to town 65 percent off it's it's definitely worth it um the stuff is great it, it is just amazing and it won't rack up a drug test legal in all 50 states cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com okay let's get to the injury report case where are you broken and let's talk about the team after that yeah no i'm all over the place but <laughs> the team uh let me see i as we were recording earlier the Wednesday injury report hadn't come out yet. I'm gonna, I think Riz can help. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Uh, so here's here's the official injury report for Wednesday. Jamie Collins did not practice. I would be a little surprised with that neck injury he suffered in the last game yeah. if he played Oof, this weekend. Um, that sucks. We were we've been very happy with him overall this year. Uh, Crosby with the ankle did not practice. Taylor. Decker went from limited to did not practice, which that's always concerning. I don't know the details there. It's the groin injury. So it could be a, just a day of rest type thing. It doesn't look like Kenny's probably going to play again this week to do not practices in a row. Uh, Matt Prater did not practice back injury from carrying something. Um, hey, he just needs some CBD cream. It'll take, it'll take perfect <laughs> care of it. And, and, and he'll still be able to pass his tests for the NFL. CBD.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Yep, yep, yep. Ragnow, <laughs> Ragnow has gone do not practice two days in a row uh, with that throat injury. And I don't know, you know, I, I he's the one, he's one where I'd be a little bit more up in the air, even though he did not practice both days this week, because if he was, you know, I feel like I don't know the exact extent of that injury, but it's always seemed to me like it could be a just one day it's, 
feeling better kind of thing. So I don't know, maybe, maybe Riz has more thoughts on I, that. I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never broken my throat. <laughs> that's, right. that's, that's a right. tough one. We keep right. trying. <laughs> uh, Daryl Roberts limited. I'm not terribly Dude. concerned about that. Uh, he is limited. He's limited two days in a row. Uh, I do know that he went out during the game. Uh, Mike Ford was full practice today. That's good. Stafford was limited practice two days in a row. As much as I think he probably shouldn't like as a human being, say that he shouldn't play after all that nonsense that he's been through, including we don't even know what the extent of the injury that took him out of the game was, uh, but limited right. practice two days in a row. And we know Stafford. So I would most definitely put, I would put him at like 75%, if not higher to, to play uh, Vitae went back to limited practice today. So whatever little yeah. tweak he had is likely, that, that that's actually a it good was one. a concussion he, he's coming out of the concussion protocol he has to get a full practice in tomorrow if he does that and is asymptomatic of a brain injury at the end of the day he will be allowed to be clear, sure sure be active um, and remember they, that this week is sped up today is thursday for the lions because they're scheduled to play on saturday and mm -hmm. that's 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 still the schedule as of now so uh, everything is accelerated Which, today. So so tomorrow is their Friday. Thursday is their right. Friday because they're playing. You know, you get, get that last day. So uh, it, it it does give shorter time for the injuries to uh, to heal and to get reported. If they here's a question for you: If they move the game to Sunday or later, will we get extra days of injury report, or will I, we still only just get the three? I think we'll only get the three officially, right. but sure. uh, they they will certainly you know keep keep rehabbing and, and they'll they'll take advantage of the extra time i think that would certainly help stafford um i don't think we're gonna see Gall i don't think we're gonna see galladay again this year that's yeah, just my opinion at this point um his hip injury is um it's devolving into deandre levy territory where he might have gotten bit by a sloth or skydived right. off a right. plane or something who, who knows right. what's going on but uh he's not practicing um it's been my understanding that he's not even at the facilities so that's uh mm. Yeah, that, that, that sort of says where he's at. Tony, yeah. what, what do you think? All the missed time this year. I mean, he's. I figured he's thinking he's a 16 to 18 mil guy if he's healthy. Mm -hmm. What does this year's performance and availability do to his contract number, do you think? It lowers it big time. I mean, there's now a serious question about whether he can stay healthy and stay on the field. He's not going to get 16 or 18 million. He can forget about that right now. I think he'll be lucky at this point if he gets any more than 12 million. I can see him coming in somewhere around the nine, 10, 11 million dollar range and maybe a shorter term contract. I don't, right. a team might only take a one or two year flyer on him as opposed to getting some sort of a longer term deal. And keep in mind, wide receivers and Riz and Case will back me up, I hope. Wide receivers, kind of a dime a dozen now in the NFL, even as good as Kenny Galladay is, mm -hmm. wide receivers are easily replaceable. Look at Mohamed Sanu, for example. He comes in, he makes an impact with the Lions, and he was a guy that six weeks, eight weeks ago was on the street. Yeah. God, I wish Looked we like spent he was that out of the time league. then. Yeah. <laughs> um one more one more player here. Uh we looks like we activated Julian today. Yeah. Yes. yes. Good. And so, uh um uh, what's his Oquara, name? Oquara for those. Yes. Yes, Julian Oquara. Um, not not King Julian the lemur. Um <laughs> uh, Everson Griffin is back too. He's back from the COVID list, mm -hmm. so he is back and ready to play, which is great news. Of all the injuries the case went through, the one that immediately struck me as like boy this could be worse if it gets if it doesn't improve by saturday is matt prater because <laughs> at this point who's the kicker if matt prater struggles can't kick is it jack fox as your place kicker or do you bring somebody up off the practice squad to kick and i'm not 100 percent sure they have a kicker at this point on the practice squad. i don't think they do <clears throat> you know the one that worried me was was taylor decker and and the reason being, Matthews is already just so hurt and so beat up. And and I, the other part about Taylor is when we were talking about the the Pro Bowl nods, I really feel like he got a little bit of a a stiff on that one. He's 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 been really really solid left tackle. He's done a really good job, and he took a lot of heat before this this season from people who had seen the one or no, I don't say one or two because I don't know what the number is, but the very few handful of holding penalties he had gotten before that were at just really inopportune times. But he played. He played great last year. He's been he, he's been great. He's been great this year. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised. He's a real solid left tackle that doesn't give get his due by by any stretch. Correct me if I'm wrong, but with Prater, what didn't we have to have somebody else fill in for him for part of a game at some point in the last couple of years? 
Ooh. I I yeah, you know I could be right. wrong, but it wasn't I think the time we was did. Sue, but it was who was it? No, it was definitely more recent than that. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look it up. It, well, so. you're right. It was. We do not we do not have a uh, another kicker. Time. We do have Aaron Sipos back. Um he's an Aussie rules punter. Right. Uh but he uh, he did not kick when he was up. It over. was like Patricia's first year. Yes, yes, exactly. I, I, and I don't remember the exact situation from it, but you're right, Case. That that absolutely yeah, happened. It's wow, stuck in my know. brain, but I, I, yeah, I don't remember who yeah. it was to be honest. So. Good call. Good was stuff. it Martin? Did, did Sam kick for us once or twice? I don't remember. Anyway, oh, it was, sorry it was, to derail us so far. But. No, that's 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 a good <laughs> that's a good rabbit hole. If somebody can, if somebody remembers what that is specifically, please let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for the the idea of Jack Fox, it's a, it's a completely different motion. I now my guy who plays for Georgia Tech, he's a backup punter in his, in his freshman year. Um, he was field goals and punts, but he at one point had to concentrate on one or the other. And because they are different motions and different works, you, you generally wind up having somebody different than your punter who winds up kicking field goals for you on a on a football team which is why sue was out there kicking field goals for us years and years ago and whoever else that was the case referred to it was it, um i'm looking at sam martin right now he does not have any career place kick attempts oh by the way he's not having a great year in denver no. either no, no. <laughs> if you can't have a great year kicking the ball in denver he has a good he has a good gross yardage, <laughs> but his net yardage is terrible, which is indicative of him out kicking his coverage, um, and not in the terms that a lot of dudes want that to mean. <laughs> um, he's he's not controlling the kicks all that well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, there was so much promise there; it just all went awry. Yeah, that thin air. I, having golfed up there and seen how how much farther the golf ball flies when you hit it, it's like I'm a pro golfer. I'm a pro golfer. Anytime I get there, that ball just sails up in that thin air. It's crazy. All right. Um, I had to take two clubs off in Denver when I play. Seriously, it's how how much wow. ball it flies. It's crazy. All right. Uh, four mistakes to avoid. This is this is something a little bit new, but I want to talk about this. What do the Lions need to avoid in order to to have a chance to win this game? And I'm just going to go around the horn here. I'm going to start with you, Riz, the top right. What did the Lions need to avoid in order to beat the Bucks this weekend? Oh, uh. <laughs> More COVID? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's, it's not a bad call. I mean, you have Thomas Carter and Ty Warren as your defensive staff. Um, I mean, and it, doing rock, paper, it, scissors it, for calling. It is an opportunity state. for those guys to show what they can do, but it would be much better to play Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Gronk. Um, they do not have Ronald Johnson this week, which is kind of nice, but they still have uh, Leonard Fournette is there. Um, they have some recognizable backs. Um, they have really good tight ends. Uh, that's all hands on deck, man. You can't afford to have any more coaches go away. Um, you yep. can't afford to have any players that are in close contact with any of the coaches who were taken away because uh, this team's already undermanned. They're already under talented going into this matchup. Any further attrition before they even get to the game would be, uh, I, I already think that spoiler alert, we're, we're not going to win this game. <laughs> it's uh, it, it looks even worse if we're not at full strength. You get Steven Thomas with the defensive headset. You got Hank Fraley with the offensive set, or the, the head coaching duties. This is going to be a heck of a game. I'm telling you, <laughs> we cannot play with those guys out. It's definitely going to push. All right, Tony, your mistakes for the lions to avoid this weekend. With Taylor Decker, a question mark with Frank Ragnow, a question mark with Vitae, a question mark. The one thing the Lions have to avoid is not letting the Tampa Bay front four putting pressure, getting pressure, a lot of pressure on Matthew Stafford. And that's a team that loves to make the quarterback move out the pocket and feel uncomfortable. So for me, you got to be able to protect Matthew Stafford and you got to be able to keep that Buccaneer pass rush off of him. And oh, by the way, I think Ndamukong Sue might like to have a nice sack or two homecoming, as it were, back to Detroit. Yeah. You no, know, you know, he'd like to do that. You know that. Well, thanks, Tony. I appreciate it. I'll think of a new one. Uh, <laughs> no, I absolutely agree. That's that's absolutely absolutely key. The Lions are not going to win with Chase Daniel back there, and the, and and the every hit that Matthew T Stafford takes, it's less of a chance for him to be on the field after after that hit. So he, they have to protect him. They have to because it's going to be ugly otherwise. Uh, Case, while I think of my net, my <laughs> my mistakes to avoid, what's your <laughs> sorry? To avoid? No, it's fine. It's okay. Well, our our seemingly uh returning to health defensive line needs to avoid 
uh, the opposing offensive line on their way to the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Tom Brady it, it will just tear us a new one uh, all over the place with the, with the injuries that we're suffering in the secondary right now. Um, it's, it, it is ugly and it could get really ugly, really fast. It's the kind of game where, we saw what the Titans were able to do with us once our secondary completely broke down. If our secondary is still completely broke down, which I'm not sure it's not, that could be the way this whole game goes. And if you've ever watched Tom Brady play, you know, he's not going to take the foot off the gas just yeah. because they're beating us. So this one could get out of hand real fast and be a, you know, a, the kind of record breaker. If, if the defensive line can't, get some pressure um which I, like i say i hope they can with griffin back i don't know if okwara plays this week or not but i mean i don't see a reason a julian that is not romeo I, although shout out to romeo for the safety last week that was fun that was a beautiful um, play that was awesome yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um but uh yeah, i mean I, I don't know i don't necessarily see a reason not to put julian out there at this point in the year give him give him a few reps um and then and then shelton back as well so i mean they're they're probably not a hundred percent. All of those guys are probably not fully a hundred percent, but this is the closest to a hundred percent. This line has been in quite some time. So it maybe, maybe they'll without Patricia stopping them from, you know, doing this or the other thing, maybe they run on, you know, pure instinct and emotion on this one and, and they get to the quarterback a little bit more. Who knows? I'm being optimistic. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so to number four, <laughs> make sure you don't go last when you're talking about the four mistakes to avoid. Thank you, two right. cases. <laughs> <laughs> it was protect Matthew Stafford, and as a backup play, it was make Tom Brady uncomfortable because Tom Brady, when he's uncomfortable and running around, has a hard time. It's the only way to put a cap on Tom Brady is to get hits on him, keep him running, keep him moving, and uh, don't give him the time that he, he, he thrives in because if he has time, he will as you said, carve a team up. So yeah. Can I give you a suggestion to talk about? Sure. Sure. Avoid injuries to players who are important to our future teams. <laughs> <laughs> All four of them. <laughs> you got Swift. You got, uh, uh, well, Okuda's already out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oda Warrior. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Yeah. Um, People, hey, whether they like it or it. not, Christian I mean, Jones is going to be back on this team next year. We probably need him to be at least somewhat yeah. upright. Yeah. Um, offensively, Hawkinson is great. You know, protect anybody else that you, you might want to keep. Um, there's well, not a I lot. assume they'll keep Decker around. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, if, if, the offensive well, line, um, as much as we like to malign it, has been probably the brightest spot of the team. I think we'd all agree that they've sure, been sure. they've been the most consistent unit. Um, it would be great if they could come back intact and everybody is, I believe, under contract other than Abushi. Um, and I think he's fairly replaceable, although he has not sucked. Uh, I will I will give him more credit than a lot of people will. He is he gets after it in the run game, and there's a noticeable difference when they're running behind him than when they're not. And that's not something that I, I thought I'd ever say about Ode Abushi again. There you go. All right. I, I'm gonna go to my third tier. I've got one here. <laughs> there you go. The the bend don't break cannot break. If we hold them to attempts at, at, at kicks, the game is ours. <laughs> they do not. Their kicker is trash, and yeah, we've seen kicking they, issues. They, <laughs> yeah. We've seen that they've been able to do that uh, with Green Bay early, right? They've been able to do that with some teams that should have really beat the snot out of us. They've been able to get stops on them and unexpectedly. So that's I mean that's the play here, right? You can't go three and out again. You can't you can't continue to do that because you have to keep up. This is going to be a gas pump score kind of game again. And if you can hold them to kicks, that's almost like holding them to nothing because their kicker is that bad. Thank you. Thank you so much there, Zuki. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, really quick, we'll talk about where Vegas is. You know, something better than Vegas, you're always going to win. Well, when I'm in Vegas, I do the Spectre Vision because you can't lose. But Amazon, amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com, amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com. Anything you're going to get, you get those great gift cards this holiday season. Where are you going to spend them? Well, Go to the Amazon at Detroit Lions Podcast.com. I'll kick you right through. They give us a kickback on everything you spend. Keeps it out of Bezos' hands. You don't want him to buy the Lions. It's it's not what you're looking for. So take his money, give it to give it to the podcast, and let us do all the great things we do for you. Amazon at Detroit Lions Podcast.com. Okay. You guys know that, right? On the Spectre Vision 
<laughs> Everyone's a winner there. You don't lose. Uh, all right. Uh, Vegas has Tampa at minus nine and a half. Uh, they got, yeah. Hey, it was 11, 11 last week. We are, we're getting to be a better team. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but we didn't exactly cover that. No, we got a score Gami, but we didn't cover. <laughs> uh, Lions on the money line plus three sixty bucks minus four forty, which is again not nearly as bad as the negative seven ten against the against the Titans. So we're doing all right. Oh, good grief! <laughs> all right, and then let's talk about the over under. I love to do the the pick this. We're gonna make Riz go last because he usually has a either writes it or has an article written on the Lions Wire every week about the over under. Case where you That's think true. the over under is in this game. No looking, no cheating. Oh. Tony's tight. 50.5? That okay. seems low. Tony? <laughs> 54. Okay. Riz? Four. I'm going to go 51.5. Oh. Tony, you win. You, it is a Christmas miracle. Tony comes out on top. It's a 54 over under. And I, Oh, wow. I, Dead I, on. There I, you wow. go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's. I was thinking that it was like a Price is Right thing. It was like <laughs> seventy, and he just happened to be the closest one. Yeah. <laughs> Little guy oh. going up the mountain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, I I feel like this is an over game. I just feel like this is going to be a high scoring affair. As long as the Lions can put twenty on the board, I think this is absolutely an over game. If we can put two touchdowns on the board. I think that's where you're going to hit your 54. Um, how about you guys? What do you think? You, you over or under? You find it hard to decide. I, I'm kind of on the under on this. Yeah. I don't think that Tampa yeah. is going to be that sharp. They have not played well when they have had to play down, and they're playing down to Detroit's level. I don't think that the Lions are going to score all that much because I, I do think that as much as the the Bucks have some coverage issues, but they mitigate it by getting a pass rush. And I think their pass rush is going to be fairly effective um, with the right side of our offensive line being the way it is. And with Stafford being where he's at, I, I don't see us having a lot of success running the ball. So I, I think it's going to be like 31 to 10, 31 to 14, 34 to 14, something like that. So I, I, I don't think it's going to get that high. Why do you think this is uh, Chase Daniels coming out, Tony? You were talking about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I'm, that matters in the over-under, yeah. to be I honest, too, yeah. significantly. But I'm with Riz. I think this is an under game. I really do. I just don't think – I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of scoring. Let me put it that way. I know the Lions aren't going to score a lot. I don't think the Buccaneers are going to score a lot either. I, I think this is – a grind it out on the road type of game for Tampa Bay because they know what's ahead. They win this game. They're in the playoffs. I think they'll do just enough to get the victory at Ford Field. All right. That's right. They do clinch with a victory, uh, by the way, yeah. and they are in the running for the number five seed. Um, they are currently the number six seed, and they do not own the tiebreaker with the Rams, so they are desperate. They have the Rams win the West, so they're in a tiebreaker with the Seahawks because they win that tiebreaker if they're head-to-head. -head. Yep. Case complicated. Where you I, I, I disagree. I think it's the over. I think if you look at, you know, the last four weeks, the Lions scored 25, 24, 25, and 34, uh, 30 the week before, or uh, two weeks before that, uh, you know, we did have the shutout versus the Panthers. So, I mean, obviously that can happen, but the Lions offense has been scoring just fine. And that's not to say that the Bucks don't have some defensive issues that we're going to, that we're going to struggle with, but it, it really depends if Stafford is playing and Stafford is playing well, I he's been doing a great job with the guy he's guys he's got uh, Hawkinson keeps moving the chains I know they're not the fastest scoring team in the league because they don't throw a deep that often um, but the, he's been chucking a few down to, and I think you know as, as uh, there's interestingly I would not have expected to see a few deep passes thrown Cephas's way this year uh, but we have and I would not be surprised to see that continue yeah, no, I I agree. I think I don't think Tom Brady is going to let up, and I think this is the kind of game where Tom Brady comes ready to play, and he's just putting those the points on the board. They're, I mean, they they they're in a very tenuous spot as far as making absolute sure that a they make the playoffs and b that they get a favorable seed. They're so. coming to score, and this Lions defense is not going to be able to stop them. That's that's kind of where my head's at. And the other side is when you look at Matthew Stafford's uh, passing passer rating the last couple weeks, even hurt. He's been killing it. He's been just absolutely killing it. So uh, I, I just I just feel like this isn't this is an over game all the way. All right, we'll walk through. We're gonna go around the horn again. Start in the top right. We're gonna go with a final outcome prediction. Riz, 
I'm going to, I'm going to stick with 34 to 14. I don't, I don't think that this is a game that the lions have a great deal of a chance in. I think Tampa is playing motivated. I think they will bring their a game. I do think that there's a limit. I think the bevel strategy will be to, to make it as few possessions as possible. That takes away scoring opportunities. I don't think we're going to be that good in the red zone that the, the bucks are good in the red zone on defense. Um, not so much on offense, but, uh, I, I just I, I really don't see this being a uh, much of a contest. And, and with the uncertainty with the coaching staff, is it going to be played Saturday? Is it going to be played Sunday? It's it's tough to be the road team in that situation. It's even tougher to be at home because you, you're in a routine. You're expecting to do something and it's not there. That's I, just just bad juju all around for this game for Detroit. Yeah. Tony, when it's out of your control. Uh, like Riz says, things get get pretty crazy and, and and pretty out of hand, and it feels like just everything. The wheels are completely off the wagon right now in the in the Lions organization. Yeah, and Riz hit on the reason. I think this is going to be a little bit of a low scoring game because I think with all the uncertainty surrounding this, with the COVID nineteen situation, with when actually the game is going to be played, I think Tampa comes in with the idea they're just going to grind it out. They're going to play as hard as they can on the road, but ultimately, it's one of those games where they have to gut it out. So to me, twenty eight twenty one. Buccaneers, Lions will probably score a late touchdown to make it close, but I, I really think this is going to be a grinded out game for the Buccaneers. How about this? How about this? We're going to go, we're going to put Millersberger on the line. Tony okay. and Jeff on the over, Chris and Case on the under, and uh, whoever wins, the other the I think other it was the other way play. around, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was yeah, the yeah, other sorry. way. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to pull the switcheroo on you guys. On his mind good. already, man. <laughs> I said Miller's Burgers. I got lost. I like, oh, Love God. something as much as Chris loves Miller's. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Good. You guys up for that? You up for a burger bet? Sure. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, right, why not? Sweet. All right. Come on, score, baby. All right, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Case, go ahead and hit the final score for us, man. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, um, I'm going to guess it's more of a 24-34 uh, loss for us. I do think that I think we'll continue to see the Lions offense function enough to score on at least three drives. Um, Ed Prater is shaky. I think it wouldn't surprise me if there's another missed field goal or two. It makes me wonder if the back thing isn't a, it hasn't been going on for a while, if that hasn't been affecting him all year. Yeah. Um, not that I want to speculate too much on that kind of thing, but I, uh, I do think they'll score at least two or three touchdowns. So I don't, mm, I'm not convinced it'll be a low scoring affair, even though I understand where the other guys are coming from. I think what happened with against us with the Titans late in the game last week is there's a high probability that will happen again, where they'll just end up with a few uh, scores in the late third, fourth quarter type situation. So, yep. I'm looking at 41 14. This is this is the this is the Bucks finding their feet for them to drive themselves into the playoffs against a broken weak team who really doesn't have much to, to take against them. I think it's gonna be a blowout. There you go. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lions fans. It'll be a fun game to watch if you like scores. <laughs> if you, you love know, I, watching I, I, the announcers <laughs> fawn over Tom Brady all day. Oh, yes. Man. Come on, um, he's got good hair, Riz. You gotta give him that. He he does have good hair. You know, Hawkinson, by the way, is getting better hair all the time. That's that's I look his, up. his look. He came in. He looked like a kid, right? He's a, he's he he's a grown ass man now. <laughs> the facial hair, the whole thing. I'm like, dang, he's he's turned into a very good looking young man. <laughs> I'm out of the hair conversation, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you you have an important place in that, Tony. Let's not let's not short sell you. Let's see what I did there. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, no. Oh. No, I didn't mean that, and I just and then I was like, oh, that kind of fit. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't meant in that way. All right, guys, I appreciate everybody. I want to tell you all, thank you, uh, Jeff, Tony, Case. Great, great year. Thank you all. Have a great, great Christmas, a great New Year. Safe times. Absolutely. Be well. Thank you very much for everything for the podcast. Everyone who's listening, watching, thank you guys for being with us this year. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up. There will be no post game show this week. Um, the post game will be me actually being able to drink uh, copious amounts in uh, after the game because I'm going to be traveling. So we will do that, and then we'll pick something up next week uh, sometime along the way and get some some content out there for you. Um, will I shave my flavor saver if the Lions win? Yes, absolutely I will. This thing. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure where you were going with that. It's, <laughs> it's, you never know. Oh, you oh, never no. know, right? You never know. <laughs> working purple again, Tony. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Clean my ears out. All right, the remember most the mature, <laughs> mature adults you all know. So it's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, that'll do it. Remember, the show needs your involvement. You don't forget to spot on the Patreon. Don't forget about us on the Patreon. There you go, English. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Get access to the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet. I told you all about it before. He's in a little dollar a month. Gets you access to the Slack and have some fun. We'll do that. Check us out on Facebook, also on Instagram, and on the Twitter machine at DET Lions Podcast. DET Lions Podcast, the very best place to see Case. Trying out a new tinsel man thong. <laughs> one strand. Give us a call via Skype at Detroit Lions Podcast. All one word, Detroit Lions Podcast. <laughs> call us the Lions Line. I think that was for your benefit, Tony. Thank Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Three, three, five, four, six, six, Need new seven. headsets after that one. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Case, case with his eye patch. Uh, be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com and subscribe to the podcast so we can show up in your ears automatically. If it's Case, you won't even know he's there. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions Podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems, because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit connection. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.